Yeah, it's, it's really um, amazing for me to reflect on the way that this training has um, changed my life in such a radical and gentle way. And um, I think two of the questions today I could relate to particularly in my own experience and can see the change in, in those areas. And the first one would be um, physical sensations and, um, and pain. And then the other topic would be, that was mentioned, was feeling bored or boredom. And it's, I, I, j boredom was something that um, in some ways ruled my life because I had this idea um, that I never really thought about as even being an idea. I didn't question it or wasn't aware of it in that way. It was just something that this idea that I should never be bored and that if I even had the sort of first stirrings of some kind of sensation of being bored, then that was a sign that there was something wrong and I needed to do something about it immediately, probably leave the situation. And um, yeah, and I just, and I can look back and I can see just, just how much that controlled like my behavior and my life. And it's really funny to sort of look back and to see, oh yeah, gosh, I, because of my fear of boredom, I would go and try and do really exciting, adventurous, dangerous things. And, um, and I enjoyed some of those, but sometimes I can see that actually I was kind of quite lucky to come back from them. It was this, this, this somehow this fear of this idea of boredom. And um, it meant that I would avoid, um, <laughs> I was going to say some people, but actually most people, <laughs> because of the fear that I might feel bored when I was with them or talking with them or that they might be a boring person. Whatever, these, it was a that kind of vague idea of what that would be, but it was, definitely wasn't me. And, um, and so it would really affect the way that I chose um, to live my life in terms of the people that I spent my time with. And um, so funny to see this, this playing out. And, um, and so then when I came to the Balanced View training and, and the, the simplicity of the instruction and the suggestion and the, the nature of our mind that we're introduced to, I, it's just breathtaking. Just the simplicity that we can discover as the basis of our own experience. Um, the wide open, bright clarity of our own mind that when we just stop thinking for a moment and we notice what remains, there's something that doesn't go anywhere. There's something that is aware of the next thought arising. There's a cognizance, an alertness, an awareness, an intelligence. And um, when you just stop thinking for a moment, you just give yourself an opportunity to notice it. It's always there. It doesn't go anywhere when you do start thinking again, in my case, almost immediately. Um, but to just to notice that there is this basis to my experience. There's something that's aware of everything that's going on. And um, the, the simple practice of short moments is to just take a short moment of allowing the flow of descriptions, of sensations and of experience or what we call data or points of view, just to be as it is. And it's a dynamic flow, it's continually changing and um, you can look in your own experience and just see the way that everything's continually changing, one thought flowing into another and there's a sound over there and then a gurgling in the stomach or, you know, it's just a, a seamless flow of experience. And the conventional way that we use our minds is to focus in on that experience, to try to describe it, and then make sense of everything based on those descriptions. Um, so that would be an example would be boredom. You know, as soon as there was a, even the thought that there might be this feeling of boredom somewhere, then I would try and make sense and behave and adjust my um, life according to trying to make sense of that description and boredom and trying to avoid that one, for example. 
and then in a short moment I allow the flow of experience to be as it is and I again recognize or identify this fundamental awareness or intelligence and just shift the focus from this obsessive um, describing and um, complete absorption in the descriptions to recognizing the wide open perception that is at the basis of that particular description. So whatever your current moment perception is now, whatever you're thinking, feeling or, sec uh, or sensing, just relax your mind and body and again notice that there's an intelligence, an awareness, an alertness that is at the basis of that, that is aware of whatever you're thinking, feeling or sensing. And through repeating these short moments <clears throat> what I began to see was that whatever the description was, whatever the experience, there was the same intelligence or awareness at the basis of it. And it didn't actually matter what the description was. The descriptions were always changing. Um, I'm, I'm really fascinated and, and enthused and excited or, oh God, I'm so bored. Both of those, when I took a short moment with both of those descriptions, it was the same intelligence that was feeling bored as was feeling really excited. And now that was interesting <coughs> for me. And then I began to see that the confusion or the, um, the lack of clarity about how I could live my life and how I could make decisions was basically due to me focusing in on all of the descriptions rather than recognizing this brilliant natural innate clarity of mind. And to have the invitation to allow all data, all, all experience to be as it was, and to really test this in my own experience with whatever I was thinking, feeling or sensing um, was the suggestion I was given. And so I began to test this out in my life. and. Um, it was amazing for me to test out allowing boredom to be as it is. And I, I, I'd, never, I'd never done that before. I, I'd never done that. As soon as there was a hint of boredom, or a feeling that there might be boredom, or even full-blown boredom, oh God, I'm so bored, <laughs> I would immediately have to do something about that. Like I'd have to find some entertainment, some distraction, something to, to do something with that boredom. And then I was, at one point, I decided actually I'm going to just allow that to be as it is and recognize that the basis of that feeling or that thought is open intelligence. And the boredom was fascinating. The boredom was just this dynamic display equal to everything else that was going on, equal to the birds singing and the stomach rumbling and everything else, thinking about what happened last week or what somebody said 20 years ago or everything was completely indivisible, including the boredom. And that meant that rather than being a victim to the boredom, rather than allowing the boredom or the fear of it to dictate the way that I lived, I could just relax and allow it to be when it came up and see that it didn't have the power over me that I thought it had. And that it's interesting to reflect, I'm never bored. And now I'm never bored. Because just sitting, doing nothing, um, for example, um, I tend to have my um, meditation when I'm waiting for a bus or a train. And that used to be, that was terrible because the threat of boredom, it was obvious, and particularly when it was late and then there's impatience as well, that's definitely something that you shouldn't feel. But now I had this tool of short moments where I could just allow myself to feel and to be however I was. So I could feel boredom and allow it to be there, allow it to flow on by and rely on the complete perceptual openness at the basis of it. And there was deep relaxation in boredom, complete entertainment in boredom. I could feel impatience and allow it to be there. And rather than getting swept away in this tide of irritation and impatience and, you know, whose fault is it? You know, maybe I can find someone to complain about this and, oh, let's complain with everyone else on the platform about how terrible the train service is these days. Or <laughs> Actually, I could just relax and allow everything to be as it was. And what was interesting was that it, it didn't make any difference as to 
when the train arrived or not, whether I was caught up in my impatience or completely relaxed and at ease. But it did make a difference to how I lived my day and how I related to everybody else. And so there was this clarity of mind and this clarity of thinking that um, I found was always available. But the habit of describing some things is so strong and focusing in on those descriptions and physical sensations, it's, um, you know, the first time that I allow myself to feel um, uh, pain, real pain, whilst relying on open intelligence just for a short moment was just incredible. It, it opened up so much for me. Um, I began to see just how much of the suffering I had around my body and physical conditions wasn't the actual sensation of pain. It was all of the descriptions um, and the thoughts and emotions that came after that initial sensation. And I, I, the perfect example was for me in, um, here in Arambol on the beach. And, and I love to swim, I love to swim. I really, really enjoy it in the morning. Um, it's really good for my body. And um, so there can be all of the descriptions around that, about how important it is for me to swim. And, you know, gosh, if I couldn't swim here, how awful that would be. And um, a few years ago, I had an injury in my shoulder. And I got here on the beach. And um, it meant that I couldn't swim for the whole season. And I had really bad pain in my shoulder. That meant that it was difficult to sleep at night. I could only lie on one side. I was lying, sleeping on one side for so long I'd forgotten how to sleep on the other side. It was kind of strange. And, and what was interesting was that the, the pain would arise in my shoulder and it would be quite intense pain. And <coughs> there would be the immediate describing of that pain. Oh, that's so painful, would be the first thought. And then the next thought might be something like, oh no, this is just terrible. You know, this is terrible. I, I'm not going to be able to swim on the beach. <laughs> look at all those, look at all these people enjoying themselves on the beach. You know, I'll probably never swim again. I'm going to be like this for months or years. Or, and, and the suffering wasn't the pain. The suffering was the focusing in on the descriptions that came afterwards. And it was amazing when those descriptions began to come up immediately, because that habit of focusing in them was so strong, I would then take a short moment or rely on um, some of the other support here to remind me that I could take a short moment and to allow that physical sensation to be as it was. And it was amazing to use the physical pain as a support in my tool of relaxing for a short moment. And actually, I can see that the benefits of that w were immense. First of all, there was no suffering around it. And secondly, if I really wanted to heal this as best as I could, great, be relaxed about it. Allow it to heal naturally by being relaxed. And then from that relaxed vantage, you know, maybe there's other things I can do to support the healing, you know, medical help or whatever is needed, but to approach it from a relaxed, open vantage, again, with this clear mind not allowing the descriptions about the pain to cloud my, my judgment as to seeing what will be of most benefit. And um, so the, the invitation is to just test and to continue to test these short moments of allowing everything to be as it is and to see how it works for you. The support network and system here is just completely comprehensive. And what that means is that there is no aspect of your life, and there's no aspect of my life that I found I can't discover that open intelligence or awareness is already the basis of that thought, emotion, sensation, belief system, idea, whatever it is, and that I can rely on this complete clarity of mind in all circumstances, regardless of descriptions. It's an education. So I'd educated myself and learned in many ways to focus in on the descriptions. And that was a process that takes many years when you're growing up. But we read about um, describing everything, we talk about describing everything, we um, hear other people describing everything, we go to schools where the focus is on describing everything. And so it's an educational system and here is a, just a, another educational system where now we're learning how to allow everything to be as it is. 
So we read about allowing everything to be as it is. We talk about allowing everything to be as it is. We spend time with other people that are allowing everything to be as it is. And we learn that we can do that too. So it's just the same that we learn growing up in terms of becoming a victim to the descriptions. Now we see that we're not a victim to any description. It's just a very simple education in the nature of mind.